Welcome back to Scruffy Tales and today's video where we will be taking a look at the Swedish equipment that's being used down in Ukraine. So let's refresh our memory. Uh, Sweden de deployed around, around Sweden deployed 51 CV90s of various variants and 10 SW122s, the main battle tanks, Leopard 2 version, and 8 to 12 Archer self-propelled guns to Ukraine to help them fight the Russians. And we have now finally seen reports that all three weapon systems are in place. A bit sketchy on the Archers still, uh, but we, we know the CV-90s are in uh, scene combat and there has been video footage of the uh, STRE-122s. Uh, moving around down in Ukraine. So, the archers, I guess, is the most interesting part. As far as I know, there's no visual confirmation and uh, nothing of the sort. What we have is intercepted. Uh, Intercepted. People have seen, uh, seen uh, Russians talking on Telegram. Telegram is the, the Russian version of Twitter. Uh, this wonderful source of information that we all seem to rely on. Uh, and on Telegram, Archer has been mentioned being in use in the south of Ukraine, uh, in and around Oriki. How they know? I don't know because it's not like you know if an artillery shell hits you, it's not like oh that was fired by archer. You can't tell by the round coming in, right? Because every NATO standard gun fires the same type of ammunition. Uh, so how the Russians have come to this conclusion, no clue. But at least it's this is what's been said on Telegram on the Russian Twitter. Very, very credible source, I must say. Anyway, if this is true, the I guess the interesting part is that in and around the uh, south of Oroki is where the big Ukrainian push, armored push into Russian uh, territory uh, began a week ago, and then they pushed you know five, six kilometers uh, straight into the Russian lines and cut out the. Uh, a pretty substantial wedge into the Russian defenses. So maybe the uh, archers helped out with that, who knows, but this is the uh, latest rumor of the archers and uh, quite possibly they helped out with the massive Ukrainian push south uh, between Robotina and Vergova, south of Oroki. As far as uh, the STRV-122s are concerned, not much to report on actually. Uh, just a couple of videos of them uh, moving around. There was one though that uh, showed a STRV-122 together with CV-90s and I believe it was Polish uh, combat vehicles. and. So that suggests that the STRV-122s are operating together with the CV-90s. And the CV-90s are located up and around Kremina, fighting the, uh, trying to defend against the ongoing Russian advance towards uh, Torsk. So it's quite possible that we have the Swedish tanks in this area together with the CV-90s. And that's about it. The, that's all I've seen of them. Uh, nothing about combat or anything. No rumors of uh, some obscure dude on Twitter uh, knowing anything about them. Uh, as far as I know. Right. So, 
CV90s. Uh, recently there's been a lot of videos popping up uh, involving CV90s. Unfortunately dealing with a CV90 being taken out and then later being retrieved and recovered by Russia. So let's uh, go over what's been going on lately. Right. What we know is that the CV90, the Swedish CV90 version, the STRF 9040 has seen combat for weeks, possibly for over a month by now. And in that time, we've seen uh, how Russia has tried to uh, destroy CV90 with a uh, heat tracking anti tank uh, round fired by a uh, fired by artillery. Remember the video where the CV90 was driving down the road and then cut into a tree line into a forest and hid, and then a vehicle right next to it got hit, right? And Russia tried to pass it off as a uh, CV-90 be destroyed. That was evidence that the Barracuda camouflage that all Swedish vehicles have been equipped with in the Ukraine is working. It's, uh, it masks the vehicle from uh, uh, heat-seeking uh, uh, anti-tank weapons and, uh, you know, thermals in general, if you if the Russians are looking down their uh, thermal scopes, they can't uh, see the CV-90 as easily as a CV-90 will be able to see them. So that works. That's awesome. Um, but what's important here now, first impression is everything. That's what people say. So the first impression we've seen or gotten from this war of CV-90 is a CV-90 dodging a anti-tank weapon and then the second time is getting destroyed by an anti-tank weapon so that speaks you got, russia can use that for propaganda obviously but here's the thing it has taken russia well over a month to produce anything worthy of being used for propaganda when dealing uh, with cv-90s CV-90s has seen combat for over a month and only now has Russia been able to produce one video of one CV-90 getting destroyed or uh, disabled rather because it wasn't, it wasn't blown up, it was damaged and the crew abandoned it and uh, Russia could retrieve it. Uh, and in that incident with the, uh, the CV-90 getting hit, hit up close by an anti-tank missile most likely a anti-tank uh, uh, mine of sorts. Russia has this mine that uh, is sort of an anti-tank. It's not. I, th I think it just uh, it shoots the copper cone, so it's almost like an IED, but, uh, except it's you know properly made. And a tank drives past it, uh, triggers the mine, and the uh, this. Uh, factory manufactured IED uh, hits the tank in the side or the front in this case. Uh, and when this happened, I believe it was the gunner that got hit. Uh, the videos we've seen shows that the uh, right hand side of the vehicle is damaged. And when they filmed the inside, you could see the right hand side in the turret where the gunner is located. And it didn't really uh, look like it was supposed to be looking. So the gunner probably got wounded and hopefully he wasn't killed. Um, but that's not it. That's not the end of it. Because author Lars Wildering has once again popped up on Twitter making all sorts of claims. And, and uh, or not uh, on Twitter, on his uh, webpage, Cornucopia. I, I will link... Uh, uh, I, oh, I'll have links for you below uh, so you can read all this for yourself. It's really interesting and I encourage you to go and check it out if you all haven't already done so. Uh, but for anyone who is not fluent in Swedish or can read Swedish, uh, I will briefly explain what it says. It's uh, what he says, Lorsvildring, on his uh, webpage there. Uh, he claims to have seen video footage of CV-90s in combat, several videos, 
of CB90s in combat, dealing out tremendous punishment to the Russians, taking out tanks, uh, infantry, and what have you. Uh, and according to him, the CB90s are a massive success. They are do, performing very well in the heat of battle. And there's also a quote from one of the Ukrainian commanders describing CV-90s as proper armor. Um, they're surviving artillery barrages. Uh, uh, a Russian, uh, one of them got uh, destroyed, uh, disabled, I should say, by a Russian tank. It took a direct hit from a Russian tank, but the crew uh, survived, climbed outside, and could live to fight another day. Incredible. How the hell does a infantry fighting vehicle survive a direct hit from a uh, tank. Amazing. Uh, so I'm maybe uh, it was hit in the front where the engine is or maybe it's uh, you know like we saw footage of a Bradley not long ago taking a hit in the uh, dismount compartment and uh, so maybe that was what happened it took a hit in the rear hit the open space where there's really nothing except uh, dismounts and the vehicle survived. It could be that. Uh, so that, uh, which is incredible if that's the case. Um, uh, sorry, I lost track here. Uh, so, so we have all of these things going on and Los Wildling appears to have a, some direct link to what's going on down there. So CV-90s are performing very well in combat. And Russia has basically nothing to show for it. They have video footage of one CV-90 taking one hit. That's it. This should tell us that CV-90s are performing exceptionally well in combat. So how is all of this positive for Sweden? I mean, Russia has taken up one of our vehicles, they've retrieved one vehicle and can now pick it apart and learn all our secrets. Oh my god, what are we supposed to do about this? Well, first of all, we knew this would happen. We were sending vehicles into war, we would lose vehicles, and some of them would be retrieved by the enemy. It's just how this works. It, 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 it's, it's war, right? So we knew this would happen. So we were prepared for this. We knew, the government knew, the army knew that if we send these vehicles to Ukraine, chances are they will learn, Russia will learn our secrets. So, yeah, don't, we knew this would, could, would or could happen. On the other hand, what we are getting out of this is that Ukraine is testing our stuff in rough, hard, tough combat wartime conditions. And we can now see what works and what doesn't work. Right? We know that, oh shit, we didn't think of that. That's not good. We have to uh, modify this on our existing vehicles or at least keep this in mind when we make a new vehicle, right? So we can modify, adjust, and get things working uh, as they need to be worked, uh, as they need to be worked, as they need to work in combat. This is something we could not have figured out on our own, just doing uh, testing up in Norland, right? So now this is incredibly valuable for our own armed forces. So our army uh, becomes stronger because of this, right? Because now we can, uh, like it says, we can adjust our equipment, our thinking, and even our tactics to the reality of war instead of just doing it by theory, right? Here we can see how our equipment works, what does work, what doesn't work, and how we can 
you know, make our own stuff at home even better, right? So the next generation of 1940s, CB90s, will uh, draw on the experiences from Afghanistan and Ukraine. So the next vehicle will be built around actual combat experience. What does the vehicle need in order to win the battle? What does the troops need in order to win the battle? Not theory. We're not looking at what the US is doing. Not looking at what the uh, United Kingdom is doing. We're looking at how our equipment is handling war. This is so important for our own uh, defensive capabilities. I, I mean, unimaginable. So yes, Russia will learn some of our secrets. But they will also learn, you know, when they pick the CV-90 apart, they will realize, holy shit, this is a tough beast. Look at the gun, look at the ammunition, look at everything. And they will learn. So they know that, okay, they already knew that the CV-90s were you know, tough enough to crack, but now they know exactly how difficult it is to go up against the Swedish army. And... Russia obviously also realizes that Sweden will uh, take note of what works and what doesn't work in Ukraine. So if there's a conflict in the future, Sweden will be even stronger, even more prepared, thanks to Ukraine. And so we have learned that the NLO robot 53, as we call it, it works exceptionally well. It will kick ass. It will destroy anything that R Russia tries to ship across to Gotland or Kolskuna or wherever they intend to go, right? If they want to come here. And we know that the uh, Nifty uh, the 1940s, with their 40mm auto cannons, they are beasts in combat. And Russia has found out that our uh, surface-to-air missiles uh, RBS-70, they're shooting down Russian gunships and ballistic and cruise missiles all day long, right? Russia now knows that Swedish equipment is deadly as hell, and they realize that if they go up against the Swedish armed forces, that that's a tough nut to crack. And the question is, do they really want to make a mess with Sweden in and around Gotland, right? So now we know that our equipment, it works. It is dead and very capable. And we are also learning what must be done and how we can improve our equipment, our weapons to be even better, to be even deadlier. And now Russia knows this too, Russia knows that Swedish weapons are very dangerous and they know that the next generation of Swedish weapons will be even more dangerous which will mean they will hesitate to pick a fight with Sweden which means we are safer from Russian military aggression thanks to our equipment today being used in Ukraine Thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And uh, yeah, d don't be worried about a CV-90 being picked apart by Russia. It doesn't change anything. It, it won't give them a massive advantage against Sweden in a potential conflict. All it does, it's, it will teach Russia that if you mess with Sweden, you will lose big time. That's it, right? So, I'm not worried at all. We, were, we knew we would lose vehicles. We knew Russia would retrieve vehicles. We knew they would pick up an end law and bring it back and try and pick it apart and stuff like that. We all knew this would happen. Doesn't change anything. The, the, what it does change is that Russia now knows how much firepower, how much more advanced the Swedish armed forces 
uh, are compared to Russian, uh, the Russian military, which means Sweden is all the more safer for it. So yeah, uh, keep supporting Ukraine and uh, just let them use our stuff. Show Russia what waits if they want to pick a fight, basically. And with that, go for Mars, Ukraine, give them help.